So you've got a lily pilly that you're looking after. Maybe it's your lily pilly, or maybe it's one of your clients. If you don't know how to properly care for it, you're gonna kill it. Or even worse, it's gonna look so bad that you're gonna wish you killed it, and then replace it with something better. In this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know to keep a nice, tight branching habit with supple leaves that are free from pests like aphids, scale and psyllids, and diseases like myrtle rust and root rot. If I don't mention the exact reason your lily pilly is struggling, by the end of this video, you'll at least know what to Google, so that you can get to the bottom of the issue. I've gotta warn you, if you have the wrong plant in the wrong place, I'm gonna tell you to cut it out and then replace it with something better. I'll then tell you about the best lily pilly varieties that thrive around the country, and I promise that at least one of them are gonna thrive in your garden's conditions. Unless your garden is indoors. They do at least need partial sunlight. Let's get into it. So what are their climate and soil requirements? As native rainforest plants, lily pillies have a natural affinity for tropical climates. They tend to thrive in regions with high humidity and rainfall, however they're also hardy plants that can adapt to a variety of climates, from temperate to subtropical. With that being said, there are cultivars that will thrive in almost any climate around the country. And I'll be going over some of the most versatile varieties that will thrive, right from Brisbane down to Melbourne and everywhere in between shortly. Lily pillies aren't usually particularly fussy about soil types, they can grow in a range from slightly acidic acidic to alkaline soils, however they do tend to prefer well drained soil. Soggy, waterlogged conditions can lead to root rot diseases and other health problems such as psyllids and aphids. If your garden has heavy clay soil, consider improving its structure with gypsum and organic matter to prevent waterlogging and to break up the hard soil so that the roots don't struggle to penetrate. While they can tolerate some shade, they usually perform a little bit better in a position with full sunlight. This will encourage some dense, thick growth and vibrant foliage colour as well as flowering for those birds and bees. However, in extremely hot climates, some lily pillies will appreciate some afternoon shade to protect them from scorching. So, what are their watering and fertilisation needs? Newly planted lily pillies should be watered well until they become established. After that, they can usually get by with whatever rainfall they receive, but you should still provide an extra drink during extended dry spells. But if you've got the water to spare, keep them regularly watered to keep them performing at their best. They appreciate a good feed as well. Use a slow release fertiliser such as compost or manure to promote that healthy foliage growth and flowering. And lily pillies are one of those plants that love a good feed. Remember to always water well after fertilising to prevent nutrient burn and to ensure the nutrients are well distributed within the soil. Some people are going to tell you that you need to be careful when feeding lily pillies because they're a native plant. But you can tell those people that they don't really know what they're talking about. While some natives like Proteaceae members can't tolerate high nutrient levels, generally plants in the Myrtaceae family, like lily pillies, can be fed just like your exotics. Technically, the best time to prune your lily pilly is usually in late winter or early spring, just before the new growth starts. Regular pruning helps you to maintain a dense, bushy growth habit, which is particularly desirable when using lily pillies as a hedge or as a screen. As always, use sharp, clean pruning tools so that you can minimise the risk of disease transmission and damage of the branches. Lily pillies are generally quite resilient, but they can occasionally be affected by diseases such as root rot, which is usually due to waterlogged soil, and pests like beetles, scale, and psyllids. Psyllids can cause unsightly lumps on the leaves, but these are mainly aesthetic and rarely actually harm the plant. Myrtle rust is the real villain when it comes to lily pillies. If you notice any unusual signs in your plant, it could be worth consulting with a local nursery or extension service for advice on treatment options. Some varieties of lily pilly are resistant to sucking insects, which can be a vector for disease so choosing these varieties can help prevent issues. Regular care and vigilance are key to keeping your lily pillies vibrant and healthy. So that's going right back to watering, fertilising, pruning, and just keeping a check of signs of pests and diseases regularly. At Osbury we focus on breeding low maintenance, low fuss, high functioning plants that we test rigorously to ensure that they perform as they're supposed to. Here are the best low maintenance, pest and disease resistant, and beautiful lily pillies that you can plant in your Australian native garden. If you have a small space, like a a courtyard, like a space between the house and the fence where you need something narrow but with a little bit of height, allow me to introduce you to Straight and Narrow Syzygium. Straight and Narrow Syzygium is a very narrow, semi-compact and dense plant. It loves moist but well draining soils but it can also tolerate periodic dry periods without any worries. Prune it twice a year for a very tidy hedge or every two to three years as a wider screen plant. It's naturally psyllid resistant helping you stay away from nasty chemical pesticides. It works really well in Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, 
WA and the ACT as long as it's protected from frosts. Sublime Acmena. This lily pilly is particularly psyllid and myrtle rust resistant. So if you're nervous of those diseases and pests, choose this one. It's a lovely mid-sized tree with refreshing lime green new growth and dense foliage right to the ground, making it another perfect hedging or screening tree as long as you don't need it to be too columnar. Masses of white fluffy flowers appear in summer, although it rarely produces berries. This one grows to five meters high by two to three meters wide. It tolerates a wide range of conditions from cold to drought, even to seaside gardens. It's great in well-drained soils to heavy clay loams. It's great in Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, and WA. Sweeper Waterhousia Floribunda. This is an improved Waterhousia variety with a heavily weeping habit. It's a much denser form and it's highly myrtle rust resistant. It produces large clusters of white flowers in summer and its foliage is much denser. And it's excellent for large, dense screening as a street tree or planting near hardscapes because it softens harsh concrete structures. It can grow to a whopping 10 meters high by eight meters wide. So it's not exactly great for courtyards and small gardens. Plant it in full sun to part shade, but just avoid hot or dry exposed inland regions. It tolerates cold and drought and suits well-drained to heavy clay loams. This lily pilly is perfect for Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and WA. So now you know everything you need to know about growing lily pillies, or at least you know what you need to test if you're having any problems. We really rushed through this guide, so it wouldn't hurt to give the video another watch or to bookmark it to listen later while you're working in the garden or traveling between jobs and the work gear.